do that. Even like I drove by the car dealership the other day and there were people walking around. And if you talk to any car people, they'll say, um, yes, inventory is really low and prices are really, I think they've come down a little bit, but for a while their prices for, of cars were really high and, but people were still buying cars. Right. Um, and I think the same is true about real estate that people are like, Oh, who would buy a house right now? We're buying houses right now. Right. You and I, yes, we bought a house at the end of this summer. So end of summer, 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, it was October. Okay. October. So fall. And it was a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And, um, we did not get what I would call a great deal. Sure. It's a great property. Yes. We paid money for it. <laughs> yes, we did. And we don't have a great interest rate comparatively to right. what we have on, say, our primary residence. Right. I think in the scheme of interest rates, people talk about the interest rates being very high and things like that, as we know. But, you know, compared to what we have on our primary residence or what we'd like to pay for an interest rate, we don't have a great interest rate on it. Right. We still bought it. Why do we do that? Because we know it's going to make us money. We ran the numbers. It's going to be a short-term rental. And we know it's going to make us money. And we know it's going to continue to increase in value over the time that we hold it. So it's not something that we're going to flip and sell next year. That would be harder to... It would be um, more risky. Because I don't know that in a year from now we could sell it. And make all of our money back, especially with the renovations that we've done. I think right. probably, but right. I'm not like, yes, we could sell this next year for. Right. We might break even. We might break even, right. But as far as a business proposition, flipping, paying a premium and then flipping and then trying to get even more of a premium. It, right. Probably not going to happen. And those are, I mean, those are out there. They're a lot harder to find. Yes, they are. But you and I, our business, as far as we have an investment business. Right. We are still looking and purchasing properties right now. Right. In, you talked about the, the plan is a hold strategy. Right. right. So it's a so it's more about the strategy. We can pay a little more now to get the right property, which this was the right property for us. And so we did pay a little bit more than maybe we wanted to. <laughs> um, but it's a hold strategy. So we are going to hold on to it for... 10 years right? and in 10 years we'll get our money's worth out of, out of the property. Right. And yeah. we've spent the last month and a half renovating it. Right. And I think people too, you know, how do we do that? How are we doing what we're doing? I think, you know, it <laughs> looks pretty, pretty on Instagram and our renovations and, you know, we basically took this camp that was, you know, dated, built in the 1980s and since has not really had any renovations. And we walked in and we could have left it mostly like it was. Mm -hmm. We could have rented it as is, except for some balusters upstairs that were not in the loft that were not safe. Right. Um, and per usual, like everything, when we bought our first income property, Last fall, mm -hmm. a year ago, October. Single family rental. Single family rental. rental. Honestly, not in the best neighborhood. Nope. But again, we were thinking hold. Right. Um, let the property appreciate and rent it out to cover our basically debt service, the right. mortgage on it. And um, we did that by using money from our home equity line of credit on our primary residence. So that's how we got started. Yes. And um, when we bought that property, our single family residence, in not maybe the, the nicest neighborhood, I think our thought process always when we buy something, or it has been the last two times, is how do we go in and um, make improvements but don't over-improve? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we wanted this single family to be clean and safe yep. and 
get a good renter. Um, but I do think that we over renovated or over improved slightly. I will put that on myself <laughs> uh, for because then you have to increase the rent. You know, right. if we had just walked in and painted all the walls, not furnished it, which is another story, um, not put up a fence, not, mm-hmm. you know, whatever else, you know, we probably could have rented it for less, but at some point you're trying to get back those costs of renovation. Right. Um, the same thing with a camp yep. on the lake is we probably could have rented as is for a lesser cost nightly. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do these renovations and we can charge a little bit more nightly, but it's also in the initially covering the cost of the renovations. Right. And, um, I think it makes it more enjoyable for our family. Right. Cause we, we plan to use it when it's right. not rented. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but it's always a balance. I feel like you go in and you want, well, that's a good, that's a good point about over renovating, mm. right? The neighborhood matters. You know, if you build a, um, 3,000 square foot home in a neighborhood with 1,000 square foot homes, you know, you're the biggest house in the block. You may not get the same premium that you'd get if there were 3,000 square foot homes around you. Um, It's hard to compare when people come in and look and say, okay, the neighborhood is small houses and this is a huge house. That smaller house weighs on people's brain of the neighborhood and it does bring down the value a little bit. Um, the neighborhood does matter. Location matters. Um, and so when you're thinking about renovating, thinking about doing these things, it's important to kind of match the neighborhood a little bit. Um, you can, you can certainly improve there's sort of stretching one way or the other. Um, but if, if you go and add, you know, a huge garage, and nobody on the street has a garage, well, your house is going to be the the most desirable on the street, but it's also not going to necessarily get, you're not going to get the full cost of the garage back Mm. either. Um, It's a balance. Right. Um, And for us in the the first rental property, I don't know as we necessarily over-renovated. Most of it was just paint. We probably did a couple things we didn't need to do, the fence being one of them. I still would do the fence. You would still do the fence, of course. Even though I know it's... Well, I would still do the fence. Uh, but with but with camp, you know that it, it's a little. What is it? Seven hundred square feet. Yeah. Um, you know, has a a gorgeous house next to it with a big wraparound deck. You know, we we're actually the worst house on the street. Um, maybe not the worst house. There's mm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are a couple that are falling down. But yeah. Um, the 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 point being, we have some flexibility in terms of upward. In terms of the more we renovate it, the more we almost match the neighborhood. Right. Um, so so we're bringing it up to match the neighborhood as opposed to going up past what the neighborhood already looks like. Right. Well, and it's, you know, it's a, um, it's not seasonal. So it's a four seasons home. Mm-hmm. And it's, there are other four seasons home, four season homes on the road. Right. which means it's plowed and everything like that. So it's not like we're renovating this house to be four seasons when everybody else closes down for the entire winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like you said, you know, we can continue to renovate. I do think there's a point where it's, it's only 700 square feet. Right. You know, <laughs> I think, you know, it's a small lot. We're not making it much bigger. Than right. It, it can't is. really get any much bigger. So I do think we could over renovate it. I, you know, not to blow it out or whatever, things like that, but there will be things that we continue to do. Like we're planning to rent it this winter. So all of our renovations have been on the inside. Mm-hmm. Everything else is going to be covered in snow. Come springtime, there'll be a whole nother list of things. <laughs> the list never ends. Right. Um, but thinking about over renovating and thinking about camp. And to me, the thing I look for most almost is not the house itself. It almost is the neighborhood and where it is. Mm is almost the most important thing Mm -hmm. that I look for investment or for us personally, whatever it may be. Um, you know, when I drove down the camp road, there's a few questionable homes. The majority 
are for season. Some of them are seasonal probably, but are in good shape. Mm-hmm. There are a, que- a few questionable homes on the road. Yeah. So you I'm try and... Thinking of maybe one, and it's falling down. It, it Yeah. It it may need to just be knocked down. Yes. This I don't think anybody necessarily right. uses it. It's, it's in rough shape. Yeah. But you think about yourself, like it's an investment for us, so it's going to be for rental. So when I'm driving down the road... Mm-hmm. And it's short-term rental. So it's not somebody who's going to go and get used to driving by. That's going to be a different person every time coming mm. in and what are their impressions. So part of my stressor when when we were thinking about purchasing this place was people driving down this long camp private road. And if they drive by this first house on the left and that's what they see, are they going to like stop and turn around and go back and right. not even continue on? Um, I think you get like one allowance. People are like, huh. <laughs> that house is not great. And then as you continue on, there's a couple nicer houses. And then there might be one where it's like, oh, that those people have a lot of stuff in their yard. But then you keep going mm-hmm. and then it's nicer houses. So I think you get that like one lenience for, you know, that house. But I think whether it's an investment or a purchase for your personal, you cannot change where a house is. Right. I mean, the kids asked us how you can move a house physically the other day. <laughs> which you can do. Which you can do. <laughs> but I was like, I don't know the answer. You'd have to ask somebody who's much more qualified in that than I am. Mm-hmm. But the one thing you can't change about a house is where it is. Mm-hmm. And you cannot change your neighbors. No, you cannot. You know, like we were talking about the other day, you can buy a property in a homeowners association. So that kind of controls your surroundings as far as you know you read through those covenants and maybe nobody can have animals as far as like livestock or chickens maybe they're not allowed to have you know more than three cars in their driveway or things like that but you can't change where a house is or what's around the house um and then the house itself i mean pretty much anything within building code and zoning can be changed. Mm -hmm. So you buy this beautiful house that's exactly what you want, but the location is not. Or you buy a house that's not exactly what you want, but the location is exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And you'd you'd lean on the the location trumping... Even if the house isn't great, you can change that. You can fix that. You can improve that. Right. As opposed to changing your neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. I think location always trumps the structure itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think that because enjoyment for you personally, are you going to enjoy living there? You know, if it's right on a busy road and you have children, small children and it's not fence you don't plan to put a fence you can't put a fence whatever it may be are you going to be in, able to enjoy living there or will you constantly be worried about the road on in addition to that the resale of that mm-hmm. if you have that thought in your brain or that problem there are chances are that the people that you know someday when you sell will also have that Right, it may Same. become a, a limiting factor to your the right. price you get down the down the road. Right, so it's not just thinking about yourself, but also thinking about resale mm-hmm. value. Mm-hmm. Buy the worst house in the best neighborhood. Right, right, right. That's what we teach the kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I want to go back and talk about the camp road because I think that's a hilarious story. Yeah. So you are headed up to look at this property right you're all excited you've driven two and a half hours and right had way too much coffee and mm-hmm. um <laughs> you're you're concerned because it's a it's a long dirt road right right and is it potholy is it you right. know, gonna be um tough to pass in the winter time and all, all sorts of those questions right and so you're trying to sort of record oh my gosh the <laughs> get like pictures of the yeah. road and and cuz you want me cuz I'm not there with you and right. we know we're kind of only going to have one shot at it. So y- you're you're trying to figure out how to best kind of illustrate the road and you realize it's much longer than you thought. Oh yeah. So you <laughs> you you leave the pavement and off you go and basically yeah. I have it set up like you know my phone's in my car on a 
one of those holders. Yep. So I click record. So the camera is like kind of just above the dashboard. I mean, it's not set up to like record when I'm driving. Right. But honestly, the thing that I was the most concerned about was the road. Mm -hmm. Because once you look at photos online, a lot of houses like we do. Right. You really get pretty good at being able to pick out, even though I don't know anything about editing of photos, like, wow, this is extra bright, meaning somebody went in with some editing tool that I don't know about and really brightened the space up, mm -hmm. meaning it's potentially pretty dark in there. Or, you know, you you um, start to notice, like, does the trim at the top of the thing, at the top of the wall connect to each other? Or just little things, it's like the construction or... Things are like, yeah, they've got a pretty couch. Nobody cares that couch is not going to be there when I buy the property. Right. Um, so I feel pretty confident. And when I'm looking at pictures of interior and exterior, that I can kind of see really what the house looks like. Not always. Sometimes I'm wrong, obviously. But what I really was concerned about and looking for was the general area around mm -hmm. where the camp was because we had not been down that road before. And um, we know about that area but not like we know Woolwich which is like you know you could name a road in Woolwich Bath Wiscasset and I can tell you like yeah you might want to live on that road or you know here are some things about that road that you should know so and that was my concern when only I was seeing it and you were not seeing it right. was when I called you after too you were like how's the house I was like it's fine let me tell you about the road right because that was my hold up was, and in Maine, you have those roads. Yeah. You know, basically if you get close to the water or kind of anywhere, most places, you know, you have sometimes these like random beautiful vacation homes or primary residences. And then you have smaller camps in between or maybe a, a camp that has been, um, left basically right. and has not been upkept so, you know people don't use it anymore and so what are you willing to drive past or have next to you or things like that and you can't always win the game we learned as much about the surrounding area as possible the neighbors are fabulous they came over and chatted with us after we had bought the camp mm -hmm. and said it's a great place like we love living here um, something about kind of like not under their breath, but just quickly offhandedly, they said the neighbors across the other side of the lake, other side of the lake are really noisy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Oh, what? They like, like to party. Yeah. They like to party. So across <laughs> the lake, which is, I mean, it's not a huge, it's kind of more narrow. It's a long pond. So it's long and not wide. So, but I didn't even think about mm -hmm. I mean, you do kind of, but you know, when yeah. I walked down to the water and looked left and looked right and tried to see what I could see, but across the pond, and of course, noise carries across the pond, so we'll have to see this summer. They were there once this fall when we were there, and... It didn't seem bad. Yet. Right. We'll it see. also gets dark at 2.30. Everybody so. has their own barometer for that, too. Yeah. You know, they, right. they may be having a barbecue out on the deck, and they get a little music going across the lake, and yeah, we can hear it, but it's... It's not bad. Um, you know, the, the neighbors may be into the tranquil, peace and quiet of living in the main woods on the lake. Right. You know, so they Best of different... luck when our children arrive this summer. <laughs> Best of luck when uh, we're up at 5 a.m. because that's when the fish are biting. And that's when um, the swimming's to be had. Yeah. So the, the road the road was pretty funny. So then I go up. Right. Later. Right. Yeah. We, we, I haven't seen it yet in person. We've, we have it under contract. Yep. It, it, we're basically closing. It's a week to close. It's, it's all done. I'm going up for right. the walkthrough, um, which is, you know, we're not expecting anything crazy. We kind of knew that the furniture would still all be there and right. know, the, the seller's still going to be there. So really we weren't expecting any change from when you saw it. And I get up there and I said, geez, the road's out. And you said, yeah, there was some construction, but I'm like, oh no, right. like, the road is gone. Yeah. And you're like, What? It, it, uh yeah so they had they were replacing a culvert right on the on the road into camp and when i get there um you come down this hill and 
the, the road is gone. Mm. There, there's no road. There's a bunch of excavators down there and people milling about. And I'm like, hmm, well, this is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, they had built like a uh, temporary road around, um, but you couldn't see it from, from where I was right. coming down. Yes. You had to be almost on top of it. And then we had a hard time getting you know, like construction materials in for our renovation because the road was out. Yeah. And uh, it, it rained quite a bit. Right. And I think the project got extended because of the rain. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was like a little iffy there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, if we could get over the road. Right. But and you, you were telling me, yeah, road's fine. No problem. And I get there and there is no road. Yeah. It, right. It's a stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I forgot to bring my canoe. Yeah. But, but I think, you know, when you think about investing investing or even buying you know everything that we have bought how we have you know turned that around into income on the other side is a lot of sweat and a little bit of stress like our first house that we purchased we did, you did a significant amount of landscaping outside. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Nope. The first Woolwich house. Oh yeah. Like around the pond and just in the yard in general. Mm -hmm. And we ripped carpets out. I mean, things like that. Mm -hmm. And when we. I think you, you're kind of hitting on when you own a home, there's going to be work involved. Right. There are improvements that need to be made. Um, you know, a roof will last you 30 years. If you buy the home and the roof's been on for 25 years and you're planning on staying for 10 years, well, you're probably going to have to put a roof on. Right. Um, you know, you can factor that in, but that's kind of the cost of home ownership. It's not just your mortgage and your insurance and your taxes. There, there's other costs when you, when you talk about owning a home and landscaping was something that I was young and full of excitement and you know I ran around and <laughs> probably ended up in the pond a few times trying to clean that area up but you know probably not something I would do now right I would focus on other things and and maybe have somebody else that kind of knows what they're doing come in <laughs> and do that stuff um y you know there's no perfect home. Even if you buy new construction, there's things, there's projects that you're going to do. Right. Um, you know, it may be good for five years, but then you realize, you know, oh, we got to do, you know, gutter maintenance every year. Right. Right. You got to go either go up on a ladder and clean out the leaves or you got to figure out somebody to do that. And that's going to cost money um, that you didn't necessarily expect. Right. Um, I think we've put a furnace in the last two homes that we've yes. owned. Uh, the first one didn't have a furnace, so. The first one didn't have a furnace. That's <laughs> right. It didn't. Uh, uh, that was way before heat pumps were cool, so. That's true. We had a monitor. Yep. Propane monitor. Which I think is still in there. Is it? They replace it. I don't know. Somebody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, the last two homes we replaced a furnace. So speaking of new construction, we're building a house. Yep. Not for us. But we are building a house as an investment. Mm -hmm. We bought a piece of land right next to our house. Mm -hmm. And we decided, first we we're just going to hold it. Right. Hold, hold the land. Hold the, hold the property. Basically, yep. the idea was to kind of protect, buffer our house mm -hmm. from the lot next door. Yeah, and it was an opportunity to get an extra two and a half acres. And, right. And um, it was right next to our house so right. great you know the kids can go out and play and there's a stream right Very but since exciting. then we have decided to try and get the money back out of that land right by building on it right. and eventually selling it right and we have not built something before personally and so we're trying to figure out the layout of this home right and ranch style ranch style single floor mm -hmm. i think one of the it's a benefit and 
also makes it harder when you've been in a lot of homes and you've seen a lot of different setups and also lived in a couple homes with a couple different setups. We have never lived in a single family or sorry, a, I would say that single floor right. home. Um, uh, our, our house right now could be. Our house right now could be, you could not use the upstairs, but we do. We live in on two floors. Right. Um, so just trying to figure out, you know, where the kitchen goes, where the living room goes and um, how big would somebody want their bathroom? Does a master still include, do people still expect one big vanity, two vanities? Do they want a tub in the master bedroom? Or is a shower fine? It's primary. Sorry, primary. <laughs> yeah, right. Primary. <laughs> um, so just trying to figure out the layout of that. And then I think the other aspect that we decided to add to this single family residence was, and partially because of the location, so it's a walkout location, yep. was to finish the basement so that it could be could have an apartment, Mm. an accessory dwelling unit, an ADU, Mm -hmm. which the main laws are changing. And there is um, more allowance for that than there has ever been. Um, So for for example, when we bought our primary residence, we have space above the garage that had already a bathroom Mm -hmm. and a small bar area. Had a sink and a refrigerator right um initially we didn't do anything with that space we knew at the time it could never be a apartment we could never rent it as an apartment space because of the rules in our town our zoning you had to have two acres is that right per residence so because we sit on two and two or a half acres we already have one residence on that Mm -hmm. acreage so we would have to purchase more acreage in order to rent that space out that is changing yes so that that's a possibility that that space above the garage could be now or someday an apartment space that could be rented Mm -hmm. so in thinking about this build, this new build that we're working on, trying to make that an option for the buyer that you could have an ADU in the bottom of that Mm -hmm. um, residence. Yeah, our plan was to try and basically make an entire apartment down there. Right. In the basement. You know, but not put it in right right so because it's going to be in the concrete in the basement floor you got to think about plumbing you got to think about electrical you got to think about all sorts of things which are much easier to do before you pour the concrete um than it is to do after you pour the concrete so we kind of decided you know what we may not want to finish these things as part of a single family home and somebody who buys it may not ever use those but if if they decide you know hey, we have an opportunity to live in this house and, you know, our aging mother can live downstairs and has her own space, her own kitchen, her own bathroom. Um, and we can finish that off downstairs for her so she can be, you know, I for us, it was sort of like, well, why wouldn't we take the opportunity to kind of put those things in as a, as a what if almost. Right. Now, it, we could put it all in and then somebody could, could, never use it or never, um, you know, kind of look at us and go like, why would you ever do that? Like we'd rather just have the basement space for a yoga studio or whatever they're right. going to do down there. And th- I think the plan is you could have a yoga studio down there if you wanted to, right. um, you know, it, it, and, um, we're, we're just trying to think in terms of, okay, these new ADU laws, these new different things. And part of the issue that will happen also is, is it's on a private septic. So it's a three bedroom septic. There's three bedrooms upstairs. 
If you add a bedroom downstairs, that's four bedrooms. Now, a three-bedroom septic is rated for six human adults full-time. So, you know, are six human adults going to live upstairs in this three-bedroom house? Probably not. Um, so, you know, if, if two are living downstairs and there's four people upstairs, the septic will be fine. But from a real estate perspective, we can't advertise it as a four-bedroom house um, because it, it's not a four-bedroom house. The septic is right. only rated for three bedrooms. Now, there's space over there that you could expand the septic. Um, you know, it's a two-and-a-half-acre parcel. There's plenty of room. We, we've kind of designed this the site with some help. Um to really sort of say, okay, if we wanted to expand this to a four-bedroom septic, we have the space, um, we would just have to get a new design. Right. Um, but for now, it's a three-bedroom house because of the septic, even though, you know, you could have three bedrooms downstairs and three bedrooms upstairs. And, right. Um, I think it it just goes to show that this market that we're in right now is a market of creativity. Mm. Like when we're thinking about when we were thinking about building the single residence, I think lots of people would love a two story home. I know lots of people are looking for a single floor living mm. house. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's great. It probably would have sold very well on its own. Um, to add the potential of an apartment downstairs, people are just having to get really creative with housing, whether it's buying or renting Mm -hmm. um, because houses are really hard to find Mm -hmm. to buy and rentals are also difficult to find and are expensive. Mm -hmm. So um, it opens the opportunity to, and the other thing too is after having just come through the pandemic, there was this push, I think where people, um, started living together again. Yeah. The Parents multi, with multi-generational living, multi-generational is, living mm-hmm. which like used to be way back in the day, a thing. Mm-hmm. And then kind of everybody was like, everybody wants their own space. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I think the pandemic has kind of pushed us back into thinking about that more, having more than one generation in a home mm-hmm. and how does that work and people still having their own space. So whether you're talking about, you know, a, family a younger family with their parents living in that space downstairs whether it's um, a middle-aged family and their son or daughter Mm -hmm. comes back and lives in that space downstairs Mm -hmm. or is any number of those and they rent the space out to somebody that they don't know it just opens up options and I think when we're looking at homes for people with people trying to have them be open to creativity in their thinking. Mm -hmm. You want a single family residence in this town. We understand that's your goal. And kind of our job is to help them be creative in their thinking. And maybe it does end up being only a single family residence in that town and we can find it or we wait for it. Mm -hmm. But what about this town next door it has a duplex, you know, or a single family home with yeah. an apartment on the side. And um, that's the option for right now. And the rent from one helps you pay the mortgage on yours. Yeah, I, I think, you know, for us, when we're when we were designing this house, being creative and being open to what we're hearing and seeing in the market, the changes in uh, laws and the changes in um, kind of the nature of how people are looking for homes, right? That multi-generational uh, effect. Not everybody's there. And a lot of people are looking for single floor living because even at, you know, 35 years old, I can get up and down the stairs, but it, it's uh, it's kind of nice to not have to worry about that. You right. know, even into the future, you know, you could stay right in the house we're in forever. Right. Um, even if I have issues with the stairs in the future, um, be, being creative as a buyer is very challenging. Mm. Um, once you've sort of set your sights on something, that's what you're looking for. Mm. And as a, as a buyer's agent, as a 
realtor that's helping buyers to find what they're dreaming of and looking for. It's my job to sort of pull on those bumpers a little bit and try and try and open up their thinking enough to get them into their dream home. Cause sometimes we don't really know what our dreams are until right. we're confronted with them. It's like, Oh, actually this house could really work. The, 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 the struggle with, with what you're saying is, you know, sometimes a, a duplex just isn't going to work. Right. You know, if, if you want to li- if you have a young family, you don't want to be a landlord. You don't want to have somebody live. Right. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. That's totally fine. Um, it's our job to raise the question and get you thinking about it because right. the more we can get you thinking about it and, and get you kind of open to all the possibilities, which is exactly what you're talking about. You know, the more possibilities we can kind of show you, the more you're going to be certain about the one that you're going with. Mm, yeah, true. And that's really the kind of the full circle of that is let me show you all the possibilities so that, you know, when you find that one, you know, that's the one. Right. And, and that's the one you're going after. Um, and then obviously we talk about what that looks like too, but. Well, and I think that is so true. You know, people, when they, when they worry about, is this the one, is it not? Take the camp example. Mm-hmm. You know, we went up to Lincoln in the summer and stayed in someone's Airbnb mm-hmm. and really fell in love with the area. And, you know, I said to you, wouldn't it be nice if we had our own Airbnb in Lincoln? Right. We and went on a canoe ride. We went on a canoe ride. We actually looked at a property while we were there. Same lake. It was two docks down from where we were staying. And we called the realtor and got in. And it wasn't the place that was going to work for us. But, you know, it sparked our interest. Kids were so confused. Yes. Children were confused. Um, Showing by canoe. Kind of cool. Yeah. And. Oh, but so then I spent you know, basically summer into October (laughs) with a search on my, I set myself up on searches and checking searches, seeing what was out there, seeing what prices were and knowing also the market that we might not get the first one. We might not get the second one. We might find one we really want and not get it Mm -hmm. because it was really fast moving even at that point. Mm -hmm. And so when we found this one, and I was pretty sure we could probably get it. And that had to do with our timing also. Yes. There were a couple others that came on that I was like, we should go for this one. And mentally, some of the some in the beginning we were not ready for. Right. We it was kind of an idea, but it wasn't definitely gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And um once I lost one of them. I was like, okay, I don't want to lose another one like this one again. We need to get mentally and kind of physically in the game. Because I, once I lost that one, I wasn't going to lose another one. And you're talking about getting your financing squared away. Right. You know, figuring out which direction we're going to go, when or should that right thing right. pop up. And just mentally too, you know, knowing that if something came on in Lincoln, which is two and a half hours away. Mm-hmm. If it came on that day or the next day, we were going to do whatever scheduling Mm -hmm. shift around needed to happen so that I could get there because that was the only way we were going to get it. And that's not necessarily always the market, you know, of the minute. I think that time frame has extended now, even from then. It depends on the property. Yeah. But, you know, getting mentally prepared for the market that you're in. Um, and if that's the market of the minute that you need to be there either that day or the next day, you need to have your finances ducks all in order and ready to go, Mm -hmm. then that's, you need to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Um, it can happen very fast and, uh, and not always, not always, but I do think you, you know, thinking about, you know, we obviously are married and we have the business together. And so we both have to be on board with the decision. So are we mentally both on board to this is what we're both looking for. This is what we want to do. Mm-hmm. This is what we're going to do. Now we're ready to do it. Mm-hmm. Kind of those stages. 